As we're gathered here together today, I want to share God's word a little differently with you. I'm going to begin by reading a portion of the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. And then I'm going to share a letter that I have written to all of you, an epistle to the United Presbyterian Church here in Whitensville, if you will. And there will be copies of this message available at the Welcome Center if you'd like to take one home today. Hear God's word for us today from Philippians 1, verses 1 to 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus in Philippi, together with the overseers and the deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God every time that I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from that first day until now, being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. An epistle to the United Presbyterian Church in Whitensville. Beloved, it is I, the Reverend Ren Serna, called by God to serve as your pastor these past five years, and now called to serve another. To all the saints of the United Presbyterian Church in Whitensville, to those physically present, and to those watching at home, to those who will read these words later, grace and peace to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. To those God has gathered in this place and who have so faithfully served him over the years, grace and peace to you. I am writing today to share my love with you and to encourage you in the faith. Know that you are greatly loved by me and most importantly by our Father in heaven. You have been chosen by God to be his children and there is nothing you can do to separate you from the love of God. God chose you even before time began and crafted you in your mother's womb. He knows the struggles that you face, the sins that you carry, and he loves you still. It is in his image that you were created and endowed with the gifts of creativity, intelligence, and love. You have lived out these gifts faithfully, standing as a great cloud of witnesses, testifying to our Father's goodness. And it is for all these reasons and more that I have come to love you. I have loved your friendship over the years. I have loved you for your compassion when times were tough. I have loved you for your understanding when I fell short. I have loved the laughter that we have shared, the recipes that we have swapped, the games that we have played together. I have loved the tender moments that you have invited me into, the prayers that we have shared, the occasions that we have celebrated together. Thank you for welcoming Aaron and myself with such open arms and accepting the gifts that we had to offer. You, the saints of the United Presbyterian Church, you have been called to such important work, and I am thankful for your partnership in the Lord. You have such a commitment to sharing God's love in word and deed. And your hard work has touched the lives of individuals from Whitensville to the Middle East to the Dominican Republic and back. Your faithfulness to the study of God's word, your commitment to prayer is an inspiration. Your love and your support of one another is a testament to God's work in your life. You have given tirelessly to the ministry that God has put before you, and you have never shied away from a challenge. It has been my great joy and privilege to walk alongside of you for this time. And while I am saddened to leave, 
It is a great comfort to me that though we will no longer labor side by side, we continue to labor for the same Lord. I am thankful for this partnership in the Lord and for knowing that while I am away, that you, my brothers and sisters, will continue this good work that God has given you. I know that this work has not always been easy. We have shared many ups and downs together. I have not always been perfect. There have been times where my brokenness has hurt all of you. I am sorry for my sins and my shortcomings. I thank you for the grace that you have extended to me. I know that the weeks and the months ahead might not be easy for either of us. Transitions rarely are without challenge. The future remains unknown. And yet even when you find yourself frustrated and worn out and unsure of where to go next, do not despair, for the Lord is near. Remember what our brother Paul said that we should do when facing trials of any kind. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Though the way forward may seem unclear to human eyes, it is clear to God. He has led this church boldly for the last 145 years, and I firmly believe that he will lead you for another 145. Time and time again, God has surprised us with his love and his faithfulness. He has provided for our every need and continues to call us on new adventures with him. How could any of us have imagined five years ago that this is where we would find ourselves today? And yet here we are. Just imagine what the years ahead must hold for us, if only we are willing to follow. Friends, I exhort you, do not take your eyes off of Christ, no matter what challenges or difficulties you may find. Keep doing the good work that you have been called to do. So many things in this world can distract us from God's purposes. Busyness, desire for worldly recognition, division with the body, indecision even. But you must not let yourself get sidetracked from the prize that lies ahead. Keep on pressing forward to win the goal that God has called you heavenward in Christ Jesus. Praise be to God that in Jesus Christ we have a perfect example of how we are to live. Here is a man more worthy than any other, and yet being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And so he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So we should do likewise. We are told to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than ourselves. Never forget how richly blessed you are. From age to age, God has cared for his people. He has protected them from adversity and he has provided for their every need. And he continues to do that for us today. There is no mountain so high or valley so low that can separate us from God's love. And you can take comfort in the fact that there is no adversity so great that God cannot overcome. We indeed are a people greatly blessed. And yet that blessing is not without responsibility. You have been blessed to be a blessing and we are called ambassadors of God's love. You have experienced this great love in your own life, and now it is your responsibility to share that love with others. You already do that so generously, with piece of bread, with your commitment to missions, through your desire to live out your faith in your everyday life. Yet I know how easy it is to get distracted from this call to forget the charge to sacrifice ourselves on behalf of others. 
Do not let yourself get so caught up in the business of church that you forget God's greatest call to us, to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Continue to provide bold risks for God. Trust that when you are called, that he will provide. Remember the great victories that we have celebrated together, starting an emergency shelter, finding new ways to teach our children through prime time, going on missions trips together, sharing God's love right here at home through things like the Easter Festival and Jesus Christ Superstar. God indeed has a great calling for this church, and he will do wonderful things in and through you, if only you would, would follow him. God has given you many new beginnings over the years, and he has many more yet to come. What a joy it is to be able to discern God's will for the future and to welcome a new pastor to walk by your side. Transitions are opportunities for new voices to be heard and new ministries to emerge. They allow a time of intentionally seeking God's will and rededicating yourself to the work ahead. My encouragement to you is to welcome your next pastor as joyfully and as fully as you have welcomed me. They will come bearing their own gifts and their own passions, and yes, their own shortfallings as well. But go forward with the confidence that God will bring the person here that you need to walk with you during this next stage of your journey. It is out of my great love for you and for this congregation that I want to leave well. And so today we begin a period of intentional separation so that our hearts can heal and we can begin to prepare to love those new faces God brings into our midst. I know that my heart needs time to heal and to recover before I will be able to faithfully love and serve my next congregation. And you too need time to discover who you are without me and to discern God's will. It would not be fair for me to continue to act as your pastor by giving advice, by sharing in your lives, because this would hurt your relationship with whoever comes after me, and it would not be right. I want what's best for you. And so for the next six months, I will not be in contact with any of you here today. That means no emails checking in, no commenting on Facebook pictures and all the incredible things that you guys are up to. No text messages just because. Do not be offended if something significant in your life happens and I don't say anything. It's because I'm respecting these boundaries and respecting those new relationships that you are forming. It does not mean that I don't love you, but that I want what's best for you. For my own well-being, I'll be taking some time away from my computer and away from my phone, and I am unlikely to hear what's happening. And though I will not be seeing the updates on your life, you remain in my heart and in my prayers. This time of separation can be difficult, but it's an important step towards whatever God has in store for each of us next. And while I will never again be your pastor, I remain your friend. Thank you once again for welcoming Aaron and myself so heartedly. It's been my absolute joy and privilege to serve you these past five years, and I wish you nothing but the best. My heart overflows with love for you, and so I leave you with the same words I began with today. I thank my God every time that I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of the partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on until completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in Massachusetts or in California, all of you share in God's grace with me. I can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer for you, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth 
of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of the Spirit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Amen.